Hello, hello. Is that coming through? Got a thumbs up in the front row. I'm going to take that as we're good. I'm going to start a timer. Uh, so if I look at my watch, it's because I'm checking my time, not because I'm bored with my own talk. Uh, so let's go. Uh, so my talk is called Powering Pixels with Scenic. Uh, if, you haven't, uh, if you haven't heard of Scenic, uh, it's a library that was uh, introduced a couple years ago by Boyd. Um, it's a 2D UI framework. So it's kind of uh, meant primarily for fixed screen devices, so a lot of IoT devices. Um, <clears throat> uh, Jeffrey Lussell uh, did a talk recently where he used it for an external display for like uh, F1 racing sim, which is pretty cool. Um, there was someone, I think his name was Powell, uh, just a few months back gave a talk where he used it for, um, he had like sprinkler set up for his lawn and he was using a screen to be able to interact with that and set that up, which is pretty cool. Um, there's lots of different things you can do with it. I thought it would be cool to try and make a game with it. I've never made a game before. I have no idea what I'm doing. So I uh, kind of jumped, in jumped into it and tried to see what I could do. So Scenic is, the documentation refers to it as having like a three layer cake architecture. So your top layer is scene, your scene layer. And this is where you're going to do most of your interacting. So a scene is kind of like like you're building an HTML page, like you're building all the layout of what's gonna display on the screen. And then that gets put into what's called a graph, which is kind of like your DOM, that gets sent down through the viewport, and then the viewport translates it down to the driver, and the driver knows like the hardware to actually display it on the screen. And then like the reverse action kind of happens uh, when you have events. So like if you're doing like uh, someone hits a keyboard or moves the mouse onto the screen, um, and then that input kind of gets sent back up from the driver through the viewport to the scene. And they kind of translate back and forth that way. Um, so the scene has no idea what hardware it's on. It doesn't care. It just knows, hey, I want, a bo I want a box here, and I want a circle there, and I want this text. And you, you know, viewport, send it down to the, the driver, and it can figure out how to actually uh, display that. So yeah, so like I said, the scene, it's kind of like building a web page, or it's kind of more like a chunk of HTML code, because usually when you have a scene in Scenic, it's, uh, it's like multiple scenes stacked on top of each other, so it's like different chunks of display code. So you might have like a menu over here and the sidebar over there. Um, and in each of those scenes, you're using primitives to build it. So you have a text primitive, a rectangle, um, you know, lines, circles, triangles, kind of all those different pieces are primitives that you can use as like your building blocks to build up your display. And then a component is basically just sort of like a fancy scene. A uh, component is, it's meant for being reusable so that if you have like, like a select drop down, you know, it would have like a rectangle and then maybe if the mouse hovers over it, like it gets like an outline, you click on it, opens a menu, you select one, that gets selected into the state. So a component, it's kind of like this container of both like the UI and the logic and the state that will be happening and it's, you know, you end up reusing those all over the place. And then the final piece uh, is the graph, like I mentioned before, which is like your DOM or the instructions for how the scene is going to be rendered. Um, so I was gonna do a quick demo here, but we're running a little bit short, so I'm gonna skip that one and do another demo later. So we're gonna jump into what it's like building the first screen that I need for my game. So when you start up a game, you have a title screen. It's a real basic scene. It's just gonna have a background image and then it's gonna have a little menu where you can select, you know, if I wanna do a new game, continue, change the settings or whatever. So right here we have the init function, which every scene has an init function. On init, we're gonna build a graph, and so right now our graph is empty, it's just a basic, it's just building the container to be ready to start adding stuff to it. And you can go and add settings to it, like I'm gonna declare that the font size uh, for this graph is 24, and that way any, uh, any components or scenes that I add to it will use that by default. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna go ahead and add that background. So I'll start, I'll use the rectangle primitive, I'll define the width and the height, 1280 by 800, and then I can actually go ahead and add in, there's a lot of different options, but I'm gonna just add in uh, a fill, and you can, do, you can do RGB, RGBA, you can just do like a red uh, atom as, a, uh, as your color, or here I'm defining an image. And the image BG there, I'm not actually showing how that's done, it's a little bit complicated, but basically you're setting up like a cache of any image data so that it's like pre-compiled um, and that way you're not like trying to load it on the fly, it's all ready to go so it can be instantly displayed on the screen. Um, yeah, so we've got that and now we want to add our menu. 
So we've got our menu component, uh, my menu component, real clever name there, and we're gonna send it a list of our three different items we want to show up on that menu. So we've got new game, and then we have the action we want it to take when the user selects that. <clears throat> then we have continue, which loads the last saved game, and then we have settings, which shows the settings menu. And then finally, we have this translate value, and this is sort of like how you position with Scenic. This is how you position it on the screen. And it's just like an XY value with the origin being in the top left. So we're saying here, all right, I want it 408 pixels in from the left, and then 580 pixels down. And this value is used all over the place, so there's a, a nice shorthand here where you can just do T, and you'll see this all over in your scenes uh, when you're using Scenic. All right, so we've got our basic graph built, but there's a couple things we still need to do here. Um, first, we want to define our state, like all, uh, all of your scenes in Scenic are gonna have some sort of basic state. For your initial parent scene like this, it's always, well, usually a good idea to build a graph and have that in your state, and also to take uh, your viewport, which will come in with your options at the top there. And that way you can refer to it every time something is updating in this scene, you'll be able to pull those out of state uh, to be able to, yeah, to be able to update the graph as needed. And then we'll just return an okay tuple uh, with, with your state in there. And then we have the option there that's push graph, and that's gonna tell uh, like our you know, three layer cake, it's gonna send that graph down to the, to, through, the, through the viewport, down to the driver so that it can actually display this scene that we built. Um, okay, so let's go check out demo real quick. Um, to run, is this, yeah. To uh, run, you just do mix scenic.run. We're gonna go ahead and load that up, and now, cool, so that is our game. We, we just have, uh, the Epic RPG is just part of the image itself, because I wanted some cool pixely shadow on there. So we've got our, our rectangle right there with the image showing, and then we have our menu down at the bottom, which is taking, you know, my key commands. Yeah, woo! <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and select new game, and what that's gonna do, so I'm gonna press enter, and the driver is taking that, that input, and it's passing it up through the viewport to the, scene, to the scene, and then the scene is actually sending a message back down to the viewport saying set your root value to a whole new scene. And that's gonna wipe this out so this background will be gone, the image will be gone, the menu will be gone, and then we'll load a brand new scene. So we'll go ahead and start it up, and now we got this great world overview layer. We got a little guy animating up here in the top left, and uh, he's got a nice two frames, simple animation, but he actually turns, which is cool, left and right, uh, and then we're gonna go down here to this uh, forest area and check that out. And now we got a nice local view. And here we've got a few more frames going on, so he's got like, I don't know, eight frames or something like that for his walk animation. When you stop, he stops and goes to that, you know, fun little dance in place, idle animation. Uh, we have another character, on, or a couple characters, we have a sleeping little uh, chicken up there, uh, and then we have uh, this bard playing her little guitar. So let's go ahead and uh, go chat with her real quick. We're trying to add to our party. So say hello to her. Hey, I just met you and this is crazy. Uh, but here's my party, so join it maybe. And after a little bit of reluctance, she says, okay. So now we have our, this hipster bard has now joined our party. We're gonna go ahead and go up. Check out the next screen. We've got some more chickens dancing around. And then we got some pirates waiting for us over here. So we're gonna go ahead and interact with them. I'm gonna give him a nice little uh, insult. Hey, you fight like a dairy farmer. And he's gonna say, how appropriate, you fight like a cow. And then that's gonna go ahead and set us into battle and jump us into this kind of classic Final Fantasy style battle scene. Um, yeah, and uh, we'll go ahead and queue up some fights here. So the all three, or all four of our guys on the left. See, I have my menu down here. It's the same, same uh, component we used earlier. The font size is different, so it fits down there but we're gonna go ahead and just queue up uh, all four of these people who are gonna fight. And let's see. So they, it's real simple. I wanted to have them move out, but I didn't get to that. So there they are, just simple little attack moves and takes out all the pirates. And that's it, that's the uh, end of my cool E3 demo there. <laughs> let's go jump back. Uh, thanks. thanks, all right, so let's go jump back in the code so we can see how some of that is actually working. Um, yeah, especially the animation, which is, was the hardest for me to figure out. When I first started doing this, I, um, I was looking forward to setting up my sprite sheet and animating through that, and Scenic does not support sprite sheets yet. Boyd, if you're listening, 
get on those sprite sheets, buddy. Um, there's definitely a bunch of people that have been talking about it, and it's been discussed uh, on the Elixir Slack channel in Scenic. Um, so I think it's coming. He's, uh, Boyd has talked about kind of an alternate version, but whatever the answer is, we want, uh, we want those sprite sheets. But I've kind of worked around it for now, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. So this is for that like local town scene. So when you first show up inside the forest, this is our init function for that. And right at the top here, is that fitting? Yes, sweet, it fits on the screen. Um, so our first uh, line here, we see scenic.sensor.register. And this is, um, so there's, it's an external package. It doesn't come with scenic, but it's often used. Um, that's called scenic.sensor. And this is what I've found to be the best way to send messages around two different scenes. <coughs> there's like a nice easy way to kind of bubble messages up from small scenes to the parent scene but I found it kind of difficult to go the other way, and I found this package being kind of the best way to globally send messages around, and the components that care about it can uh, subscribe and follow that. Um, and the, the, the biggest problem with the scenic.sensor is it has a terrible name, because when I first heard it, it sounded like, hey, if you have like, I don't know, like a radiation sensor or a temperature sensor, sensor uh, more likely, or something like that, like, okay, cool, I can use this sensor package. But really, this is just a pub sub. And it's a really nice, simple pub sub that works great with Scenic. Um, and actually, just yesterday, Boyd uh, posted in the, the, in the Scenic Slack and said, hey, what do you guys think of me renaming sensor to pub sub? I'm like, yes, please. Because a lot of people, myself included, saw the name and avoided it for far too long, not knowing that it does what it does. <clears throat> so yeah, so it's got like your three simple functions there. You can register. A uh, brand new ID, and then anyone that wants to see like what happens with that ID can subscribe to it, and then you can publish and send data to any of the subscribers. Um, yeah, so let's go back to our init function for the t the town scene. So first, we're going to register um, a sensor called action, and this is what I'm using to handle any sort of keyboard input. So if someone hits the enter key or someone does any of the arrow keys, I'm going to use this pub sub to send out the information to anyone that cares for it. Most likely the hero character that you're walking around, he's gonna wanna know every time you press or release an arrow key. Um, and then our second one here, this is kinda where the magic for animation happens. Uh, we're gonna send out frames so that we can keep a consistent frame rate so that the animation doesn't just go as fast as it can, it's gonna follow a frame rate. And we have a timer here right under it that's going to send um, every 33 milliseconds, which is about 30 times every second, uh, it's a little bit off. If you want to be precise, there's a timer library called MicroTimer, which is really nice because you can be super precise and actually match you know, exactly 60 frames per second for, or whatever. But here, this is good enough for us. We're going to just send out a little tick uh, every single time we want there to be a new rendered frame on the screen. And then after that, we're going to build a graph. So we, again, we do the rectangle, uh, which we then ap apply the background uh, image, which in this case is the town. And then we just we can use uh, graph.update to change that anytime we move to a different screen. And then we're going to put the bard in there. Uh, and we have a uh, tuple for her where we're telling the character which class we want, the bard, uh, which animation we want her to start with. So you saw, saw she's just playing her little instrument there. And then we have an L for we wanting, want her on the screen facing to the left. And then we have the translate value to posi position her on the screen. And then right after that, we have a character who's a hero class. Um, he has, his default is the idle animation, and then he's facing to the right. And we're going to give him an ID just to make it easier to target him later, uh, and then the translate value. Then we're going to set up our state on the same where we have the graph in the view viewport, but now we're going to start our frame rate or our number of frames at zero, and then every time we get that tick message, we're going to update that so we can just keep out keep sending out the current frame number so that uh, any component that cares about it can follow along with that and update as needed. <clears throat> and then finally, we'll do the OK tuple with the state and push that graph out. All right, so at the top here, this is further down in that same, uh, same component, the same town uh, component or uh, scene. And we're gonna do a handle info and that's gonna capture the tick and then it's gonna grab the current frame number out of the state and then right at the top, we're going to publish, uh, publish that right there to frame. So anyone that's followed frame, which is our, our characters, anything that's animating, is going to catch that frame count. 
And then we'll update the frame and the state so that continues to go up. And then down at the bottom, we have what our character uh, component looks like. And right at the top of our init function, it subscribes to those two things it cares about, the action and the frame. And then um, inside of the character, so right at the top, we have a handle info where it takes, so it's looking for, you know, capturing the sensor data and then the data that it's looking for inside. So frame, which is the name of our sensor, and then the frame data, which is that running counter. And we, in, uh, in like 16-bit animation, you don't actually want to render, you don't want to animate on every single frame because um, you don't have 30 frames for every second. It's usually more like something like 10 frames a second. It's kind of that slower, jilted, like that's sort of the style of pixel art is to have a little bit slower animation. So we're just using pattern matching here to catch like two out of every three frames just, just to, you know, no reply, kill that. We don't care about that. And then for the ones we do care about, we're going to grab the graph out of the state. So we're going to define a new graph, say graph equals state.graph. And then we're going to use the modify function to uh, find our hero and update. You see in that rectangle, it goes down, it's updating all the stuff that's not changing, and then it has the line that starts with fill. And that we're going to use a get fill data function, which, ta which takes the state, and our state is going to be holding information like what's the current uh, animation, is it idle or walk, and which frame of, of that are, have we currently been displaying. And then it'll just update that as going, and then we'll have the a same sort of thing for when you're doing the arrow keys. So instead of capturing frame, it's going to be the action. And so we'll have something that comes in that says, hey, they press the arrow key. Let's update the animation frame to be walk instead of idle. Let's make sure he's, the character's facing to the right if you press the right key or the right arrow and facing the left if you press the left one and uh, so on. And then, uh, oh, I'm doing way better than I thought. I got a couple minutes here, cool. <sighs> Leisurely drink of water. All right, so that's how get filled data works. It's gonna just get that frame and update it. And then when you release the key, it'll send another message for that. Uh, so that it knows to go back to the normal idle animation. And that is, uh, that is my talk. So thanks for coming. And if you have uh, any questions about Scenic, I'd love to chat with you uh, or just game design at all. I had a blast doing this project. I don't know if Scenic is meant for games and if it will uh, ever be like a great use case, but I had a blast doing it and I recommend you giving it a try. Thanks.